one thing that he explains is, um, is how to deform uh, geometry using displacement maps. But what I'm going to talk about here is using vertex paint. If we come in here, you see that we have a vertex paint here with a height map. And um, it's not, it, it's not, I'm just using it for height. I'm not, uh, I don't have any maps. It's just a color here, and it's black. And in this case, I'm going to display, instead of displaying this, I'm going to display the vertex color here. So we're seeing the vertex color, but I'm actually painting on a map channel. So I've unlocked them so that I'm doing them, uh, I can see them both at the same time. And then I just have a volume select here. The volume select is at the vertex level, and I have a map here. So I'm doing a selection based on the map. And the map here is the vertex color map in map channel 3, the same one I'm painting in. Then I just have a push at the top of that. So what's cool about this is the volume select makes it possible to just uh, do selections based on your paint strokes. So as I come in here and paint, I can, um, I can adjust my brush here and I can paint and deform. This works really cool on models, especially if you're, you know, uh, as you're sculpting them. But because it's a selection, I can come in here and change this from instead of uh, a push, and let's actually just, uh, I'll just do an undo on those paint strokes there. We'll go in and uh, change that from a push to a relax. And I'm going to come back here and paint relaxing. And I'll just come in and relax these verts here, this surface. So anything that you have in a modifier, you can, um, you can paint with vertex paint because uh, modifiers are work, work on selections. And so here I'm painting selections and anything else that I want to apply to it. So you can, you can just imagine all the different ways that you can put this into your workflow, either for modeling or for you know, uh, working on uh, material IDs or that kind of stuff. And of course, any of the parameters that I change in the modifiers change the entire thing. And I can reduce the effect by reducing the opacity here of this of this layer of vertex paint, and I can layer these motions. So if I want to have one layer working for uh, for uh, you know pushing and pulling, and I have one layer working for relaxing, and one layer working for that, I can do all of that at the same time. So um, so now let's go into some other stuff here. This is a character from Ubisoft Splinter Cell, Sam Fisher. Uh, I've removed his hands because I'm going to use him to texture map him, and the hands would texture map sort of top bottom, and uh, the rest of his body I'm going to do a different way. This is um, this is going to be a technique again using the uh, the channel info dialog box. So first I'll explain what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the channel info to uh, copy a polygon channel into a map channel. And then I'm going to I'm going to also copy the map channel into the poly channel, so I'm going to switch them. And because I'm going to uh, uh, use the polygons, because I'm going to copy the polygons into the mapping, that means that anything that I do to the polygons while they're polygons is going to affect the mapping. So uh, so it's like being able to use modifiers on your mapping coordinates. Okay, um, I'll just use I'll, I'll make my mapping coordinates into meshes temporarily use all my modifiers, use whatever I want on them, and then put them back into the UV coordinates, okay? And um, this is also useful, too, for, uh, you notice your vertex color channel is in here. So if you're transferring stuff back and forth between Max 5 and Max 6, or if you have other tools in your pipeline, and you're using Filmbox, uh, uh, the uh, FBX format, to go back and forth to motion tools or to, uh, to other software, you know, going around in, in uh, different versions of Max or whatever you're doing, then uh, a lot of the, the FBX format supports skinning and uh, morphing and textures and all that kind of stuff, but it doesn't su support the vertex colors. So you can, um, you can actually maneuver uh, uh, files through your pipeline and save your vertex colors in here by taking this channel, copying it to a map, uh, a map channel, and then just saving it as a UV file. You're saving your, your vertex colors as UVs, but they're still there, and you can even load that same file into Max 5. So, um, so that also works. So, uh, so here I've got my map channel. Here I've got my poly channel. So, uh, so before I do any copying, let's come in here and look at what I've, what I've got. We come into the object and go into the edges. You'll see that I have some edges selected. These are going to be my UV seams. So a lot of times you want to, instead of uh, rotating your cylinders around and trying to piece everything together in, um, in flattened mapping, you want to be able to pick where your seams are going to go. In this case, um, that's what I've done. I've picked exactly where I want them to be. They're under his arms. They go around down his back. They're aligned where the seams on his clothing would normally be. 
There's some around his neck. And I'm just going to use this little macro that I have here to split them open and select this. And now I'm going to come in here and do a, um, a detach, and we'll just grab this object. And so what I've done here is I've detached him from his pockets. All of his pockets will just map the, you know, box mapping or something like that. Um, his pockets are separate uh, geometry. And, um, and so I'm just going to use his body here. This is the complicated part where I'll have a lot of seams to paint, the part I'm trying to avoid. And, um, and that's what I'm going to uh, do with the, uh, I'm going to bring this into his mapping coordinates. So I have this. I'm going to go into my channel info, and I'm going to grab um, the polygons, and I'm going to copy them. And I'm going to add another channel down here, and I'm going to paste these, and I'm going to call this original. So there we have that. And, um, and with the original, I'm going, to, um, I'm going to go in and make some changes. So we're going to go in here, back to the polygons here. And I'm going to convert this back to an editable poly. And I'm going to go grab this little object. This has some modifiers on it. It's a really good idea to, uh, if you have modifiers that you use a lot and you have settings, you can attach them to, put them on objects and then merge those objects into your scene and use them like little clipboards. I have materials on this too. So, um, so I can bring this in and um, into any file. So uh, in this case, I've got a cloth modifier. I'm going to stick that on him. I'm going to make him a cloth collection. And I'm going to come in here and preview this in the viewport. So he's got a vertex color map on him right now, so his uh, vertex colors will render for render to texture. That's why he's all rainbow. And now what I'm doing here is I'm interactively unfolding his texture coordinates. I'm doing it just, <laughs> you're watching me. <laughs> this is it. This is uh, with cloth. This is cloth in, um, in, um, in Reactor. So you see, I, I have very few seams to paint. I've set this up so it's stiff, so it won't flop around, you know, and make it kind of hard to position everything the way that I want. Um, I can pull these around. You can set it up so that you can eliminate your stretching. In this case, I'm really just trying to flatten it out, just make it flat. And, you know, depending on the techniques that you're using, you, know, you can throw whatever you want. I mean, if you really want uh, to make something hang in a particular way, you can do the same stuff that you do with cloth. You, know, you can put some wind or you can hang it from a certain, you know, and make it hang down flat. If you want a mirror image of this guy, you can kind of drape him over something that makes him fold in half. You know, so things like that. I can also just bring this into my mapping coordinates and cut it in half when I'm done, you know, if I, if I just want half of it. So in this case, I say update max, and there it is. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to convert this back to an editable poly so that we're all talking polys when we go back here into channel info. And now this, I'll update that, this is my polygon channel. So this shape that you see here in the viewport, it's now, it's the polygons, right? Because we can all see it. So, uh, so I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it into the map channel. So we'll just call this flat. Okay. Now I have the original, right? I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put it back into the poly channel, because I don't want him to look like that in the game, right? So now, if we come in and collapse him back to, you know, an edible poly to get those modifiers in there, uh, we'll just go look at the UV unwrap, and we'll just zoom to his file. Now, I had gravity set up so that it was sideways, so that he fell out, so that, you know, you could see what was going on, and, and just makes things faster so he doesn't just fall into a pile on the floor. Um, and so, uh, so now we've got his UVs here that are sideways. So I'm going to go into VW space and just do a little rotate 90 degrees, come back into this space, and now he's flat again. And we'll just pack those zoom in and now you see that we've got him arranged here in the viewport and uh, I can come in and uh, you know fix some of these I got this overlapping this is just me being lazy you can come and adjust that when you're in the cloth view or you know I can come in here and just do relax here and kind of straighten that out and then once I've got this together this is still just his body I can again like I said cut this in half or put this together and you can also do this with other things if I wanted to now